A very beautiful Thursday morning to you out there, wherever you might be watching us from. This is News Hub. A big apology. We're starting a little behind schedule this morning. I am Shil Oyedeji. It's the 4th of February 2021. They're very special to a lot of people because it could be their birthday, their anniversary, something that makes them very happy. But if it is something that doesn't, that doesn't really make you happy, that brings back some memories that not so pleasant, you have the right to turn it around for you. Uh, very important because it all lies in your hands. And so on behalf of the entire production crew, I welcome you to a very beautiful day today. It promises to be a very, very big package. We'll be speaking uh, with the first lady of one of the northern states of the Federation today on a very special day today marked for those people who uh, are see life and live life and some of them survive. Those who don't are still loved even uh, as we remember them. Uh, just the tip of the iceberg. We're still talking about uh, the need for us to keep the nation going as one. So many things come around that, you know, can put, pull us apart. For instance, the Northern Elders from yesterday issued a warning, in fact, called on some Fulani headsmen who are resident in the Southwest to, to come back home in case they weren't needed where they, they were. But the truth of the matter is, uh, somebody was having a discussion with me and he said, Show, it is not all about people complaining about people not living with you. For instance, the Southwesterners, let's say Nigerians generally, there's even nothing about the region. We are very warm people. We love visitors. We love people. We, we, we absorb people into our lives. It is when criminal activities creep in that we, we start to make issues out of them. Uh, <laughs> many of my friends, maybe 15% of my friends are full of so to speak. Many of them watching this morning. I will be friends for years and years, so to speak, and there's never been any problem. So maybe we shouldn't look at the, 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 the issue from the area of where people come from, but the issue that is bringing crime and, and, and issues around us. How could you go to the farm you've planted, you're waiting for the season for you to reap, and some people will take the, the cattle to feed on such. We've never had um, full honey heads men of, that we've always known to do that. Crops are meant to be harvested and sold as, and eaten by humans. Uh, but the, the cattle know where they graze on. So definitely something is wrong somewhere. And uh, thankfully, uh, our security agents uh, are on top of the situation. But in all of this, let's look at it as if, okay, we are not going apart. We're one family, we're one people, we're staying together. There is a problem, we're going to thrash it and we're going to ensure that we, we move ahead uh, from here to where we expect to be, which is a very peaceful place. I am Shea Mwedej once again. Uh, like D Jason Derulo would say, I'm riding solo, but not really solo, you're there with me. And so I bid you a very warm welcome onto the program. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, the focus today will be next. Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content. Now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PG News and Program. 
Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over. We are presently in the community transmission phase. Unfortunately, this is the most deadly part of its spread, and it's more prevalent in high-density areas. Don't become a statistic. Wash your hands frequently with soap and running water, or use a hand sanitizer, and remember to practice physical distancing at all times and avoid crowded places. But if you have no choice, you have the choice of wearing a face mask. Remember, it's not over till it's really over. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. Thanks for staying with us and welcome to News Hub in case you've just joined us. This is Focus on News 24. Now, before we talk about issues that have come up with the social media, one wonders how we ever lived without it. I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to see, I have to say my prayers. Sometimes, even before I do, I'm looking into my phone, I'm checking my WhatsApp, I'm checking uh, my Facebook, my Instagram page, and I, I do ask myself, what was life like? without our social media it's almost unthinkable it's the young people can't even imagine that we lived their life without a phone talkless without social media and so uh the issue of social media has always uh, come up at different quarters on its goods and the bad side so to speak the former president of united states donald trump brought about the phrase fake news uh, the word fake news and the phrase that fake news can destroy and it's just as good as that but why do we uh, distinguish between deploying social media to the best uh, of our abilities, to, to the positive, so to speak, and going ahead and getting very, very bad in the uses of our social media? Social media itself is very good. You and I know that. Some of you are watching me as, uh, as we stream online, and so it tells you that it's very good. However, governments across the country, in fact, across the Federation, across the world, have always debated on social media and the need for its regulation. As some would say, for instance, in Nigeria, we already have uh, cybercrime laws which should subsist, uh, so to speak, and we, should, we don't really need any social media laws because many citizens believe that when governments talk about, uh, you know, trying to regulate social media, it is because they want to gag the people. So the words will be online this morning as we focus on the social media and fake news. What have been your experiences with the, with the use of social media the good? Have you ever had any bad experience you want to share with us on the program today? In a short while, I'll be joined by the publisher of CKN News, that's Chris Kenden Wadu, with whom uh, I'll be talking. He actually uh, was president of the Nigerian Bloggers Association. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, but we want to take a look at it from a very different angle. Uh, it's very important that you also come with us and share your thoughts with us on the program. In the meantime, let's talk about uh, the quote of the day as we still move ahead to bring you uh, the focus today. The quote of the day is, don't let pain define you, let these refine you. That's uh, according to Team Fargo. Uh, I just goes to say that it's very important that sometimes we see social media contents as being very hurtful. And that's our focus this morning. For those who have had experiences with social media and this news that were churned out, turned out very false. If you take a look at Rwanda, there was no social media, but there was media. And it took just one person to start to say things that people have defined to be inciting to disrupt a nation. Upon today, Rwanda is still Rwanda. We all don't know what is going on, although the country, thankfully, is back on her feet. But the story of the Hutus and the Tutsis, Tutsis would ever remain in our hearts. I saw the movie and I was like, okay, this couldn't have happened, but it actually did. So that goes to say that it's very important that before you press that send button, that you always, always check that what you're sending out is true, factual, and not inciting in any way. 
we, we, we're focusing on nation building on new sub these days and we always say that it's enough for you to, to think right to act right and act responsibly when you're churning out our stories via social media everybody has become a journalist uh, and that's something that, that we've come to live with perhaps forever uh, i told you earlier on that i'll be joined by chris kendall and wadu the publisher ck news chris good morning thanks for joining us on news hub Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, Cheryl. How are you this morning? Very fantastic. And so we're in your constituency this morning. The social media that uh, I know people who are making the living out of social media. That's what they live on. I mean, that's, that's what they eat. That's what they do. And uh, the, 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 the need for us to see the deployment of social media to the positive side and refrain from going the negative side is what we're taking a look at this morning. Uh, what do you have to say? Well, uh, um, the social media, just like every other media, it's good that you put the word media. If you have just said social uh, without the media, then it wouldn't make any sense. But since we agree to time it as media, then it is what it is. It's a media platform uh, through which people uh, pass on information. Uh, whether but the only difference is that while we have um, uh, uh, professionals in the mainstream, what we have in the social media are just what we call citizen journalists, uh, journalists, uh, journalism on the move. And uh, what it has brought about is also some people uh, maintaining their ideas, opinions, shared uh, information. At times, most of those information are not verified, uh, but it has brought a, a new beginning uh, to the world of reporting. Uh, fortunately, I'm a, in between the two divides. I'm a professional journalist, I read journalism in school, I have done some practices. Now I find myself as, a, as also somebody in the social media uh, online ministry as the president of the Guild of Professional Bloggers of Nigeria. So, I can authoritatively speak on both sides uh, of the divide. Uh, but what we've come to see is that, um, yes, as rightly said, uh, some people have, um, it has become a, a question of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, people use the social media for various uh, things, some for mischief, some to just pass or verify information. And in the midst of that also, we have also seen a, a rise in information that are verifiable and that can be used even by the mainstream uh, media. So it's a mystery for me. Uh, what we just have to do is that people should be able to know how to be able to provide such information they get to know which is right, which is fake, and which is genuine. Do you know that the anti-social media bill was introduced by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on November 5, 2019, to so criminalize the use of social media and peddling false or malicious information. So it just goes to say, so let's talk about regulation because uh, now you go on social media, there is an issue in the country. Let's say, for instance, the farmers had an uh, issue, and then some people would just go and bring about a story non existent, nothing that's ever happened, just to, you know, spice up and incite people against each other. Do you support uh, the planned regulation of social media in the country? Uh, we know that in China, there's some instances where uh, some sites you cannot visit because they're, they're not even available anyways. It's not only there, in some other countries of the world, where in Saudi Arabia as well, uh, it's done. But in Nigeria, you can click on almost anything and you get access into such sites to do what you want to do. Thank you very much once again. Uh, first and foremost, let's bring this up. Uh, you talk about a bill at the National Assembly to cop um, or regulate social media. Uh, well, what most people don't know is that we already have a law in place. Uh, there is a cyber crime um, a law that was signed in, that was signed by the former president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, at the date of his exit from government, I think 2015 or thereabouts. Um, on that particular day, I think it signed over um, over 100 by 100 uh, bills into law. One of them was the cyber crime uh, law, and that law effectively 
has taken care of everything that has to do with social media. If Nigerians can only take time to go through that, most people don't know about that. So, to me, what the Senate or House of Representatives of National Assembly is just a, a journey in futility. Um, even uh, some of us are against uh, uh, the one that was also being uh, provided by the Minister of Communication. We already have law in place. What we need to do is to strengthen the law. If there's anything that we have in the law, um, that we think is not doing what it's supposed to do, then we just have to look at those, those clauses and be able to straighten it. So the cyber crime issues, uh, when it relates to uh, uh, social media, uh, is now is a crime. It, it's, um, it's no longer like, you know, what we used to have the Benny, there used to be libel and slander and the rest of them. But now, it's now it has been criminalized, which means that you'll be tried like a normal criminal. And if you're guilty, you'll be you either be fine, sent to prison. I, I, I don't want to repeat it myself, but um, she will know very well, except and uh, another of our colleagues, we are the guinea pigs that were used to test this um, law uh, some time ago. And so, um, I, for one, I spent over 13 days at the Koyuk prison over a story that I posted, and um, I was one of those that were used as guinea pig. Although the case was uh, then struck out or vacated or the vets. That opened the eyes of so many uh, people. Some of us that decided to practice this business that this is no longer a chess play, which is why some of us uh, formed the Guild of Professional Bloggers of Nigeria to be able to mitigate this issue and make sure that we're able to come together and put ourselves in a position where whatever our members are putting out are correct uh, correct information. And over the years, we're also trying to make sure that the government will be able to partner with us to make sure that we can be that government is not doing the writing and they're not looking our way they're just shouting fake news fake news fake news every month fake news spend all sorts of money on but when you have an association that's already on ground they are ready to be able to assist the government uh, to tackle this issue they're not ready to, so for me i said it will be difficult for them to be able to implement i don't know how they're going to implement it how are you going to catch somebody in russia somebody in Poland, somebody in germany Somebody in the United States of America, somebody in England, somebody in uh, name it over the world where we have a cyberspace where people can um, put up information. You are looking at Nigeria, those in Nigeria. What of those are outside Nigeria, which to me uh, form the bulk of um, uh, issue of um, online. So what we can only do is to try to continue to uh, look at these issues and try to educate Nigerians on the need for us to be able to make sure that whatever information we're passing, passing out, uh, genuine uh, information that will be used. And wherever we see what, anything that is fake, we should be able to make sure that we'll bring that to to the public to make sure that it just don't spoil it. You are talking about this man, uh, information and rest of it. So the fact is that if there is no original, that will not be fake. So um, definitely we know what is happening. Um, Yes, men clashes here and there, killing people, kidnapping people. That is not a wrong information. But the, well, the narrative may be wrong, but those are issues that are in the on public domain. And they, even if you look at across the newspaper, when we come to the newspaper this morning, you will see that there's a cross level of um, 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 serious war, if I use the word, going on, even between the South and the North. Or south, 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 east, south, west, and the rest of them, yeah. and the um, issue of his men and the rest of them. But those are issues. The fact is that let Nigerians try as much as possible to provide whatever information that they can serve us. So All right, Chris. Because unnecessary tension. All right, Chris. You also can join us. We want to hear your voice on this one. You know, uh, Chris, one of the most uh, uh, very effective uh, tools that the social media has is talk about Facebook, Instagram, and what have you is that share button okay when you post the post goes there but you don't know who is going to just keep sharing and if the information is wrong it means that if for instance you have 5,000 followers and you post a wrong information 5,000 people would consume such information possibly send to another 5,000 people in 5,000 places. And so it keeps growing faster. And you know the bad news always sells. When you say good news, people hear it, but it's just passively there. But if it's bad news, you hear everybody talking about it, which is a very worrisome one. If we want to shut our eyes, we want to close our eyes to the fact that there are evils that social media can do, uh, couldn't this be like a bile in a whole cow for us? 
as I've said earlier on, we already have established laws that guide against such. Anybody that is caught doing that, or uh, passing on information that is not verifiable, or that is wrong, or that's not uh, in any way that is illegal to uh, social, or, uh, political, or security uh, challenges or problems, uh, should be held accountable. And I said that there's a lot to that effect. And um, anybody at any given point in time can be picked up for um, sharing such information. Uh, we have the cyber crime, and I'm repeating it again. And they have done about it. Go and so it's on online. Just click uh, Nigeria Survival Crime Law. I think it was signed in 2015. You will see all the clauses there. That has taken care of that. What we need is um, uh, uh, making sure that government or agencies of government are supposed to with the responsibility of uh, um, making sure that people abide by this law. The show our problem has never been having laws. We have always had wonderful laws, but implementation of those laws has been our lane. So I don't know why people could come up with um, uh, laws that we cannot implement. But that notwithstanding, let us not also uh, uh, let us also not look away from the fact that the government can also use this as an avenue to shut down public opinion on issues. Uh, so many times people have been arrested for just for even when you have verified information, and they are picked. Um, and uh, they are kept. Uh, they are one of our colleagues that was picked up by one of the uh, um, states in the South South and was kept uh, in prison for months before he was released. So many other um, people have also been picked up for voicing that opinion. So let us not try the, in the pretense of trying to say, oh, social media, uh, we need to do something about it. We need to shut down. You now shut down public opinion. If you shut down public opinion, then that also means that people will not take. Um, the, the other route, which could be uh, uh, engaging in all sorts of uh, activities that are inimical to uh, security of lives and properties. I, 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 I am one of those that believe that people should be allowed to express themselves, which is what people are doing now in social media. And don't forget also, we are just looking at the negative part. The, the social media has its positive, very, very positive that, that is proper at which is negative. There are so many things happening underground that if not for the social media, you don't get to hear about it. And when it's brought up, then you look at it. Look at the issue of rape. Look at the way we have taken the issue of rape. Do you know that rape has always been happening in Nigeria? Nothing has been done about it. But because of social media, the government is coming out hard on, uh, on um, those involved. In, there have even been laws that have been enacted now that anybody that is engaging uh, um, uh, in rape uh, would be uh, severely dealt with, severely dealt with. That is the advantage of social media. So let us not just be looking at the negative side. Every Every issue that has a negative side also has a positive side. We should be looking Hi, at side. But as I repeat again, once again, we have a law that is already in place to take uh, tackle that. All right, Chris Kende Wandu is the publisher of CKN News. Thank you so much for joining us on East Hub today. You're still with us. We take a very short break. We'll come back. With it. We'll be looking at the front pages of newspapers today. And then you can call in and share your thoughts on any of the stories that catches your fancy. Stay with us. And so we bring you the newspaper headlines on News Hub today. Our pleasure to have you join us on this segment of the show. As you have with me, Chris Kendewa, the publisher, CK News, right there, joining me virtually on the program today. Chris, once again, thanks for joining us on News Hub.
Thank you very much. It's nice to be with you. Thank you so much. All right, now let's start with the Nigerian News Direct today. Uh, the cover story here, $213 million alleged fraud. Court gives EFCC approval to arrest Mobile Nigeria MD. You can get the story on page five of the paper. And when you move about the nameplate, you find other stories there. Uh, Engineer Sule appeals to Fulani to embrace NLTP program for lasting peace. You can get that on page three of the paper. And so other stories, Ikiti Subeb, ULS, train 2,625 primary school teachers. Uh, you can also see that there. And uh, uh, insecurity, Bajabi Amila meets Buhari, says Nigerians must embrace dialogue. Uh, okay, it's other stories uh, here also today. Or you will continue to be pace setter in physical human development. That's according to uh, Governor Makinde. APC membership registration, Oyetola canvases mass participation, urges party loyalists on Omoluabi ethos. That's on page 14. And uh, there are two pictures uh, story, two picture stories here this morning. You find one uh, showing the uh, full be youth leader, Abu Bakr al receiving gift from Governor Abdullahi Suley during a courtesy visit to the governor. And the other one actually is, uh, is this governor of, uh, picture of Governor of Okun State, Dabba Biodun, all right, during a special broadcast to mark the 45th year anniversary of the state uh, there. And uh, Ogun at 45, Abiodu preaches peace, vows to sustain legacy of founding fathers. You can get the details on page 11. Dambata spotlights role of NCC's emergency communication centers. You can get that on page 2. And $2.5 billion scam. Courts have made more evidence against petro union, oil and gas, others. You can get that on page 3 of the Nigerian News Direct today. And from the Nigerian News Direct, let's go straight to the Daily Times today. And the fact that the Federal Executive Council approves 20 private varsities, 36.3 billion naira for power aviation projects. You can get that story on page two of the paper. And when you move about the nameplate, you find uh, the story here. Momo helped Buhari in picking Oshimbajo, says Ngige. So many stories continue to go uh, with the demise of uh, Momo there. And so other stories, uh, the Daily Times today. Insecurity. DSS raises alarm over alleged plans to cause religious crisis. And COVID-19 violation. Drama as NSITFGM directors scale fence to evade arrest over COVID-19. That should make a very interesting read on page four of the paper. And the tributes President Buhari ministers honor Tony Momo, Alpha Wali. You can get that on page four of the paper. And there is a picture story of an event that uh, took place yesterday of women in Romi, a do state protesting against Fulani herdsmen. That happened on Wednesday. So these are many more you can find inside the Daily Times today. Chris, let's talk about uh, the uh, Federal Executive Council approving 20 more private universities in the country. What impact would that have on the education sec uh, sector in the country? Uh, well, it will have um, a lot of um, positive impacts on the level of education in the country by the approval of 20 new private investors uh, yesterday by the Council. Uh, we have 29 uh, private investors now in existing. Uh, added that of the state uh, government and federal government. Uh, I, 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 we are having a, a lot uh, of universities. Uh, don't forget the problem we always had is that most often than not, uh, universities, as well as the state and federal universities, uh, do not have the capacity to admit the number of two that six jump or pass jump. Uh, and that has always been a problem where you see politicians not being able to. Uh, Get beginning admission into universities, and uh, that is the short gap that the private investors have come to play in making sure that uh, once a, a Nigerian is qualified to go into university, you should have the privilege of having such education. It is the same thing that is happening across the globe. But my problem is um, there is that 
the private universities are trying to have been cutting corners that I know you well. I believe lower the standards. I, I can say that for sure. Most of these private universities uh, are just private they are, they are just universities in name. If you go there and see uh, what they do, they blow our standard. And this is where the national uh, uh, NUC comes into play and make sure that um, most of the universities uh, accreditation, they get the right accreditation and periodically uh, they go around to make sure that all the necessary standards are met. Um, but that does not necessarily mean that uh, all of them are doing that. There are some of them that are doing very, very well that when you see their products, uh, you get to know that. And then coupled with the fact that uh, with what is happening in Nigeria now, Nigerians are, seems to have lost faith in the federal and uh, state university with the problem of ASU or no ASU, a situation where your student, your child goes into the university, you don't even know when it's going to be a four-year course. It takes six years for the person to do it. You just know when you enter, you don't know when you leave. We are just coming out of um, a strike that took over one year to resolve. It's not even yet to resolve. Now, NASU is into the midst again. And some universities have already canceled one full uh, academic session. Meanwhile, those in the private university are moving on, so they're not even affected. So, to me, it is a work on development. This is a population of over 200 million. Uh, we're having a um, university of within um, about 150 or about 200. It's not too much for a population. But, let us not lower the standard just because of the fact that we want to make sure that that's so crazy. You realize before we leave that particular one. The best it is, it's very, very appalling. All right, Chris, you also remember that uh, you just see our students, for instance, jam really, the schools that are available, some would say, are not enough to uh, take students who have the prerequisites to gain admission. And that's why sometimes you see students who scored highly in JAM who have all the five credits and all the other prerequisites for them to gain access to study the courses of their choices still can't gain admission because all the schools are full. Uh, I think that would also help in giving such people placements uh, moving forward. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about this one. I don't know if you got uh, where you're on top of the news all the time. Our Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajami Amila, said something yesterday. He said, no region should lord it over the other where one Nigeria. How did you translate that statement? Well, it's loaded. If you look at the underlying uh, statement, at times there are so many unsaid words in a sentence. You only have to look deep or read deep. If you're a, a deep reader like us, uh, to, there are so many unsaid. You just look at the surface, but just read it and stuff like that. Underneath that statement, and what he's trying to say is that we are all Nigerians, we should be equal. Uh, no part of the country should think that they are more superior than any other part and lord it themselves over. The and I, I, I totally agree with him uh, with what you've seen that is uh, going on. You know, several times, especially this where the current government, headed by President Mohamed Bukhari, has been uh, accused of nepotism most of the time and um, that he favors people from his own part of the country in so many things, both appointment and the rest of them. Now, we are, they are even, some people are taking it further. We are people just feel that they are, uh, they, are, they are girls who can just march into other people's region, destroy their farm crops, kidnap them, kill them, and think that they can go scot-free. And my, it's getting worrisome because if we are not doing what we are supposed to do. I mean, that is lack of leadership. We have not proceeded. Have you seen any has man, uh, bandit, arrested, or whatever, be prosecuted in the courts. Most of them are not prosecuted. And that is why they are engaging in all, some of those acts. So uh, I think we should be able to uh, walk the talk. I'm sure that every part of the country is well represented in terms of um, representation and the will put things. And uh, so that no part of the country will be that they are just second class in a country we are supposed to be all equal. All right. Thank you. You're free to call us right now. The numbers to reach us on are on your screen. Just look below there. You find the number, please. Turn down the volume on your TV set and let's have a very good conversations on the program today. We still bring you the newspaper headlines on News Hub. Now let's pick up the Sun newspaper today. That's the Daily Sun. We have a call already from Benin. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Hello? Hello, good morning. You're welcome to News Hour. Okay. Are you talking about power, power in Nigeria? 
We're not talking about power in Nigeria. We're talking about newspaper headlines. But uh, what do you have to say about power in Nigeria? Yeah, what I was trying to ask. Yeah, if Nigeria is talking about power, right? Like they are moving back to it. This is not the time to be talking about power in Nigeria. Well, we have invested a lot of money in power in Nigeria. Up to now, we have not had anything, nothing is seen on the ground. And we are talking about billion, billion, billion. I don't know. Where is that money going to be spent? Is it for the entire Nigeria or for, uh, for Abuja? Where? Okay. I actually didn't get your name. Uh, we're not talking about power, but it's good that uh, this program is for you to lend your voice. And uh, I'm sure authorities have heard you that power still remains something they have to pay attention to in uh, moving forward as a nation. Thank you so much for calling on the program. Uh, keep your calls coming in. Uh, we will talk to you in just a moment. We have Oran Saye calling us from Edo State. Oran Saye, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I want to talk about uh, the issue of the uh, university justice. People talk about uh, further views that, that nobody mentioned people university in Nigeria, whether a private or federal government uh, institution uh, is not a uh, The only university that can be trusted without fraud is local university. In Nigeria, I can agree with you because they don't want to. The authority does not even want to. People read the local university online. You don't even know where your papers are set. You don't even know who give you the date or result. And such a place supposed to be of a high standard. But in Nigeria, they concluded it already because they don't know one to. They want to continue to have foreign certificates and foreign uh, professors having black, black people collecting money for students. To try to reflect the uh, result of uh, every uh, uh, child because they are getting money from there. In the open university, you don't grab a lecturer. Right. You don't even know who is setting your paper. You have to online. I see All such. Right. Thank you, Oransa. Yeah, I guess your point made. Thank you so much. Let's give other viewers the opportunity to speak with us. Julius is also calling us from Edo State this morning. Julius, good morning. Thanks for joining us on News Hub. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Julius. Yeah, so I want to contribute to what people are saying in Nigeria. You see, eh, the problem we have in Nigeria is not about the president. I'm a Yoruba man. I stay in North for many years. My family has been not. You see, if they can do something to the National Assembly, those people they are there, they are not they are not they are not actually the matter in Nigeria. All what they want is to talk about money, allocation, order, order, order. Why people are suffering outside. And everything that we put the blame on the president. He was just there to monitor what is going on in Nigeria. They will give me paper to sign. We will sign. They will not explain to you, this is what you want to do, Mr. President. This is what you want to do, Mr. President. They are the wrong world that will bring me in. It's unfair. I'm a Yoruba man. You understand? You know, every people will be talking about him that he's a very bad somebody, he's a full of he's this, he's this, he's this. There's a chair people that is very people. I think from Nigeria. All right, Julius. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution. Chris, you've heard our people talk this morning. How do you react to their uh, submissions? Um, well, I lost that um, at a point uh, because the collision uh, bad. Um, but let me uh, talk on the issue of um, open university uh, uh, that was raised by one of the callers, I guess. Uh, um, the open university system is supposed to be a short gap uh, in bridging the gap between um, the normal university system and uh, other uh, level of education. And um, I know that Open University, uh, they've been trying their best, but um, they, they might not be able to get it totally right, coupled with the fact that in the past one year, we've um, had the issue of COVID-19. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be an, uh, an alternative, uh, but they also have their serious challenges, serious challenges. I don't know whether that has to do with um, uh, 
Uh, I know that there have been attempts by various uh, uh, Nigerians, including the former president, uh, to promote uh, that distance learning. Don't forget, that is where he got his PhD from yeah. in religious studies. Uh, and I also know that there have been as most of their courses, or some of their courses are not fully uh, accredited, accredited, or accredited, fully, uh, accredited uh, so to speak. Let's, let's look at the issue of law, which is where, I, which is what I am also doing. Uh, but in Oku University, I know that graduates of Oku University law are not allowed to go to law school. But I think that is changing. All right, Chris, uh, I think we're struggling with network uh, with you. We still stay with you on the program. We'll refresh and get back to you. I'm uh, still so taking a look at the newspaper headlines this morning on News Hub. Let's uh, pick up the Daily Sun at this point in time. The cover story today, uh, Headsman Communities Clashes, Tension, Anxiety in Oyo, Ogun, Edo, Abia, and uh, there are riders here, women protesting Edo, say they can't go to farms again. No ethnic group should dominate others. You can get uh, all the sides of this story on page six of the paper. And beside the name plate today, gunmen kill four more POS operators in Abba. That's a very worrisome one on page five of the paper. And there is a picture story here showing uh, Governor Adebuego, it's a law of Washington State, with former governor of the state, Chief Bisi Akonde, the team leader uh, and chairman of National Registration and Revalidation Monitoring Committee of the APC, Senator Lawal Shaibu, and uh, of course other distinguished leaders uh, at the registration hall at Ilaorongu on Wednesday. So other stories now. Again, DSS raises the alarm over plots to cause tribal ethnic crisis. Christian Association of Nigeria can stop the attack, not alarm. You can get that on page uh, 26 or 8 of the paper. So other stories. Red Query DPR, over $20 billion missing crude oil. And uh, Wiki hits APC hard. Uh, he has uh, some things to say. It says, next president will spend entire tenure fixing rot caused by party. Page 7. Federal government approves $35 billion for power station and 1.3 billion naira for surveillance equipment at Lagos Abuja Airport. You can get that on page 28. And government okays 20 more varsities. There's private universities. You can get that on page 3 of the paper. And the 2023 presidency, Jonathan won't run. Baraje, ex-PDP chair. You can get that on page 7 of the Daily Sun today. And from the Daily Sun, let's pick up the Nigerian Tribune on Thursday. The biggest story here, no ethnic group should lord it over the other. But Jabia Amila, a lot of writers to this story here, many of them. You can see as it continues on pages 2, 4 and 8 of the Nigerian Tribune today. And above the nameplate, Gumi meets bandits in Zamfara Forest. 500 have repented, he says. And uh, you can get that uh, when you get to page 2 of the paper. Crude oil worth $20 billion not accounted for between 2005 and 2012. That's according to the reps. That's on page 6 of the paper. And some more stories. Ibadan Correctional Facility rejects suspects without COVID-19 test results. An FCT task force truncates NSITF uh, promotion exam. You can get the stories on pages 23 and 25 of the paper today. A Violence Rocks Quara APC Stakeholders Meeting, that's on page 25. Kaduna to deliver drugs with, with drones to over a thousand health facilities. You can get that on page 5 of the paper. There is a picture story here showing distinguished Nigerians. You can just pick up the paper to see what it's all about. A local headsman hiding identities of criminals. That's according to investors. Uh, the story has a couple of writers. You can just turn to page 4 of the Nigerian Tribune this morning to get to see all of these and many more. And up next is the Punch newspaper. At any point in time on this program, on this segment, to call and be part of it. So let's pick up the punch at this point in time. A Feni Ferry Pandev tackled NEF, that's Northern Elders Forum, over alleged Northerners killings. And there's so many quotes here. It's a different, you can see our uh, quotes uh, credited to Afeniferi 
both uh, credited to Pandev as well as uh, the middle bed. Get all the sides of the story on page two of the paper. And about the name plates, Federal Government's Wemmer Bank, okay, Federal Government World Bank begins process to rebase Nigeria's GDP. You can get that on page 25 of the paper. Uh, can wants DSS as agents receive plots on ethno religious crisis. An APC dismisses alleged plan to field Jonathan 2023. And many other stories. Sheikh Gumi visits Zamfara bandits in forests, appeals for peace. And so many other stories where you pick up the punch today. We have uh, on the line Olumba calling us from Ibo. Olumba, good morning. Always nice to have you on his app. Well, uh, on approval of 20 more private universities, uh, and to what uh, one to say about standards being lowered by these private universities, I want to say here that it's not only the private universities that are lowering standards, but even public and state-owned universities. You know, over the years now, the neglect suffered by uh, my own state university, yeah, Imo State University, you know, mm -hmm. is beginning to get to an alarming level. Just two days ago, uh, students of, uh, medical students of Imo State University, you know, uh, uh, with their uh, uh, school in Imsu, protested. They are 11 years of being in the university, studying medicine. Can you believe that? 11 solid years. And they don't even know when they are going to pass out. Because of a lot of accreditation, because of inadequate uh, medical equipment, facility. All right. So this is not encouraging at all. We are calling our, our state government to do something to ensure that this there is the sons and daughters of Imo move on Thank with you. their life. 11 years is too much. Thank you, Thank you, you so Olumba much, Olumba. Olumba. Thank you so much, Olumba, from all there. Uh, we have uh, Umar calling us from Kerry State today. Thank you Umar, thanks for joining us good, on News Hub. Good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, actually, I, I want to make a comment about this DSS issue alerting people. You see, like governor of uh, Kano State State, there is nothing wrong with Lani, but there is something wrong with Nieti Allah, the group, that group, that Nieti Allah. I think it is high time we to question the leadership of Yeti Allah. There is something wrong with it. May God continue to bless our country. That is all what I can say. All right, Thank Omar. You. Thank you so much for your submission today. I mean, it's your line of thought, and I'm sure that people would understand. Uh, and still, it keeps on bringing our conversations that will bring us together as a nation. If there's any problem somewhere, we solve it. That's why we're supposed to be one people. Chris Owad is still with us, CKN News. Uh, 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 Oga at the top. How are you once again, Chris? I've heard our, uh, you know, respondents talk about issues in the papers today. What do you have to say? Um, sorry, the network has not been friendly. Absolutely. Uh, well, well, we're glad we have you back. Uh, we're just trying to. Um, I, I, I was able to just briefly hear. For KB, that's talking about Mietala. Uh, is that Mieti Allah is just one out of the several um, organizations, uh, associations that have um, uh, the headsmen or, or that um, the headsmen belong to. Um, there are about five or six of them. So I, I, I find it difficult to understand why the government, uh, various state governments, when we are talking about issue of um, talking to the headsmen, just uh, rely only on Mieti Allah. Um, I remember the last time that the governor of the state had a meeting with them, another thing that some other people came out to say, well, Mieti Allah is there to represent themselves, they're not representing us. So, so uh, they may be the most uh, popular among them, but there are still several of them, other associations, uh, where you have this. But I think uh, what we need to do is so where we can bring everybody involved in this issue of yes men together and give them the reason why no one they are doing present is not um, is, is not self 
تكتب بعدين الساعة أطول. أو الساعة Oh, okay, Chris. I think the network well, has really, awesome. really I gone have, off the hook. Uh, uh, we want to thank you, Chris Kendi Wadu, publisher of CK News, uh, for being part of News Hub this morning. The network has gone totally kaput, as we put it in Nigerian parlance here. All the same, we want to thank everyone who's called in our newspaper uh, review segment of the show today. Our program continues in just a moment. We'll take a break, bring you the news on the program, and then we'll be speaking with the First Lady of Kebi State. After the news.